Welcome to this learning session on hypoglycemia and diabetes. Hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar, is a potentially dangerous condition that's most common in people with diabetes. It is not a disease, but can indicate a health problem. Hyperglycemia, or high levels of sugar or glucose, in the blood. It occurs when the body does not produce or use enough insulin, a hormone that absorbs glucose into cells for use as energy. According to the American Diabetes Association, or ADA, and the European Medicines Agency, hypoglycemia is defined as an abnormally low plasma glucose concentration that exposes an individual to potential harm. The proposed threshold plasma glucose value is less than 70 milligrams per deciliter and 3.9 millimoles per liter. Hypoglycemia is also referred to as an insulin reaction or insulin shock. It is characterized by a reduction in plasma glucose concentration to a level that may induce symptoms or signs such as altered mental status and sympathetic nervous system stimulation. Hypoglycemia is common with type 1 diabetes, predominantly in patients receiving intensive insulin therapy. Severe hypoglycemic episodes are reported to be anywhere amid 62 to 320 episodes per 100 patient years in type 1 diabetes. Patients with type 2 diabetes, as opposed to those with type 1 diabetes who require insulin therapy exclusively, experience hypoglycemia relatively less frequently. This can be due in part to pharmacotherapies, which do not induce hypoglycemia like metformin. The incidence of hypoglycemia in patients with type 2 diabetes are approximately 35 episodes per 100 patient years there are no reported disparities in incidence based on gender. The table here explains the classification of hypoglycemia based on its level, glycemic criteria, and description. Hypoglycemia is a major limiting factor in the glycemic management of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. It occurs when the blood glucose level is less than 54 milligrams per deciliter. It should be detected by self-monitoring of blood glucose, or SMBG, Continuous Glucose Monitoring, or CGM, for at least 20 minutes. Laboratory measurement of plasma glucose should be sufficiently low to indicate serious, clinically significant hypoglycemia, as counted in reports of clinical trials of glucose-lowering drugs for the treatment of diabetes. However, a glucose alert value of less than or equal to 70 mg per deciliter is important for therapeutic dose adjustment of glucose-lowering drugs in clinical care. It is often related to symptomatic hypoglycemia. Severe hypoglycemia is defined as severe cognitive impairment, which requires external assistance for recovery. Moving on, let's discuss the causes of hypoglycemia. The causes of hypoglycemia are varied, but it is seen most often in diabetic patients ethanol, haloperidol, pentamidine, quinine, salicylates, and sulfonamides have been associated with hypoglycemia. The inconsistency of glucose level in blood is independently associated with hospital mortality in septic patients. The severity of sepsis has a strong effect on glycemic variability in blood. Alcohol inhibits gluconeogenesis in the body, but it does not affect glycogenolysis. Thus, hypoglycemia occurs after several days of alcohol consumption, when glycogen stores are depleted. Insulinomas are hyperfunctioning isolate cell tumors associated with increased insulin secretion. They can be life-threatening and primarily manifest with postprandial hypoglycemia. Other potential causes of hypoglycemia are critical illness, alcohol, cortisol deficiency, or malnourishment. Other causes include ailmentary problems, idiopathic causes, fasting, insulinoma, endocrine problems, extrapancreatic causes, hepatic disease, post-bariatric surgery, and miscellaneous causes. In critical illness states, for example, the end-stage liver disease, sepsis, starvation, or renal failure, the glucose utilization exceeds glucose intake, glycogenolysis, and gluconeogenesis. This imbalance results in hypoglycemia. 
Hypoglycemic symptoms cause sympathetic activation and brain dysfunction after decreased levels of glucose. Stimulation of the sympathoadrenal nervous system leads to sweating, palpitations, tremulousness, anxiety, and hunger. Reduction in cerebral glucose availability, that is, neuroglycopenia, can manifest as confusion, difficulty with concentration, irritability, hallucinations, focal impairments like hemiplegia, and, eventually, coma and death. The adrenergic symptoms often precede the neuroglycopenic symptoms and, thus, provide an early warning system for the patient. Studies have shown that the primary stimulus for the release of catecholamines is the absolute level of plasma glucose. The rate of decrease of glucose is less important. Previous blood sugar levels can influence an individual's response to a particular level of blood sugar. However, it is important to note that a patient with repeated hypoglycemia can have almost no symptoms, hypoglycemic unawareness. The threshold at which a patient feels the hypoglycemic symptoms decreases with repeated episodes of hypoglycemia. Let us now understand the pathophysiology of hypoglycemia with the help of a pictorial algorithm. Physiological impact of hypoglycemia on different systems and their counter-regulatory responses are shown in the given algorithm. Autonomic activation succeeding an episode of hypoglycemia may be associated with a range of symptoms. These symptoms progress from sweating and palpitations to cognitive dysfunction and seizures. Hypoglycemia can lead to coma and even death, depending on its severity or duration. It could potentially cause sudden cardiac death by inducing either ischemic or depolarization or repolarization changes. Impaired cognitive function can have potentially damaging and increasing long-term effects on intellectual function, predominantly in young children. The table here outlines the symptoms of hypoglycemia categorized as neurogenic and neuroglycopenic. Low blood glucose concentrations lead to sympathoadrenic activation and neuroglycopenia. Increased sympathetic activity includes tremor, pallor, anxiety, tachycardia, sweating, and palpitations. Increased parasympathetic activity includes hunger, paraspecies, nausea, and vomiting. Neuroglycosapenic symptoms include agitation, confusion, behavioral changes, fatigue, seizure, focal neurological signs, somnolence, which leads to obdentation that may progress to stupor and eventually coma. Beta blockers can mask signs of hypoglycemia. Further in the topic, we will explore the risk factors associated with hypoglycemia.